So we had this really elaborate intro for season two of Hard Pass. It was gonna be black and white with clips of season one and then Antonio Brown got canceled. Then we thought, we tried to do something about Hong Kong, but then the NBA got canceled. Well, that's all we really thought of, so welcome to Hard Pass season two. Woo! Woo yeah. All right, so let's get this show going. Thousands, and I mean this, thousands of counterfeit Nike and Jordans were seized at the Port of Los Angeles in Long Beach because according to authorities, some of the shoes were obviously fake because they had air in quotes printed on the side and taped on Nike swooshes. Uh, nobody tell them about Complex Con in Long Beach. That's gonna make it super interesting in November. Tourists and influencers, which are basically the same thing nowadays, are getting their gentrification on in the Bronx thanks to the now iconic stairs that Joaquin Phoenix danced on in the Joker movie. As one Twitter user put it, the stairs they grew up hating are now the cool Joker stairs. And she's right, there's a lot of clowns out there and people dressed up as the Joker as well. Conan O'Brien is in Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding and he gets to play a hologram that gives Norman Reedus an otter beanie that lets him swim down the river like an otter. Wow, Kojima has a role for everybody it seems. Look, man, if Conan can hook up Daryl from The Walking Dead with an otter beanie, there has to be a role for me to hook up all those backpack babies with sneakers, right? Come on. By the time you watch this, self-proclaimed greatest human artist Kanye West will have either dropped his latest album, Jesus is King, to go along with his documentary of the same name, or he hasn't, and we're still willing to let it slide as long as it slaps. It's like we're all this cockroach trying to hang on to this cigarette, like it's college dropout. All right. Heat check is back, baby. That's right. All right, let's take a look at some of the big sneaker releases taking place this weekend as we bring back an old favorite here on the channel, the heat check. Maybe we'll come up with a new heat check intro. For now, it's, this is the heat check. Ba -da. <clears throat> All right, Adidas Yeezy Boost 700 Teal Blue. So are these different from the medical blue Yeezys because Enrollment for nursing schools just went up with this pair. Air Jordan 1 Shattered Backboard 3.0. There's a slight kerfuffle on sneaker Twitter as to whether or not these are true shattered backboards since they are part of the Fearless Ones pack. That's just people in denial. If you want to wear kicks that look like they should come with a glowing hot donut sign, just rock it and be proud. There's no judgment here. All right, uh, size in the van skate high Halloween. Granted, these might be a little hard to cop since they are only dropping at size exclusively, but if you need a spooky pair of kicks for adult trick-or-treating, which is a totally normal thing to do and shouldn't just be for kids and no one should judge you, not even your neighbors, uh, you might need to call in the favor from one of your UK friends. Nike KD Zoom 12, the YouTubes. Uh, you know, I was kind of hoping I would get an exclusive unboxing on this since that's kind of my thing, but some guy beat me to it. Probably had some bots or something and got an early pair or he plays in the NBA. I'm not sure. Either way, I should have got a pair, but I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not upset. Really? Not at all. All right, and our pick of the week is the Nike Air Max LeBron 7 red carpet. RIP to anybody who held on to these for resale because those prices are dropping harder than tickets to the New Orleans Pelicans games after Zion got hurt. And I apologize. That's a bad joke, Zion. We still love you. Get, get, get healthy soon. <laughs> Now we're gonna do a new segment here. It's called Ask Jacques Anything. With Hard Pass coming back, we thought we'd try something new. So we put out the call on Twitter to ask me questions about the show, life, kombucha, recipes, and anything else that people might be wondering about. Not sure what that would be, but here we go. First question, Juan. All right, so who is your biggest dream interview or guest that you would want to meet? Would probably be Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, I've, I've, his house now? I've been to his house. I've been to his house, but I've never actually talked to Jordan specifically. I've been in the same room as Jordan. I've never shook his hand. We've never made eye contact, but yeah, I think Michael Jordan. For the sneaker thing, it would definitely be Michael Jordan. Outside of sneakers, it would probably be like Oprah. Uh, so with some of the free shoes and regular pickups that you get, uh, do you have storage problems and do you get uh, harassed by the family? Uh, yes, I do have storage problems. Uh, between the sneakers that I buy and the sneakers that get sent to me, the house and my closet is overflowing, so I do have a storage unit, which I do not recommend you doing. Uh, next question. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you faced uh, shaping the storyteller that you are? I guess for me, it was more of finding my own voice. Something that I wanted to be specific about on this channel is that I would be able to tell stories the way I wanted to tell stories 
stories and not tell stories the way somebody else told stories. And that's something that I recommend for you guys as well. Be your own person. Tell stories the way you want to tell your own stories. Don't don't copy somebody else. Be you, because you're the best version of you there is. All right, let's do All one right, more. Up. Is there an underrated Jordan sneaker from the uh, main line, like the Air Jordans 1, 2, 3, 4? From the original, so the original, are we saying just like the original yeah. 14? No, 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 from 1 to 34, all of it, all of them. Well, oh, there. all of them? Yeah, what's the one that people are sleeping on? Um, It's hard to say sleeping on, but I don't think get enough credit. I think the sneakerhead guys give it enough credit, the Jordan 29, just because it's an excellent basketball shoe. Mm -hmm. I think people that are into sneakers and that play basketball love the Jordan 29, but I don't think the broader public appreciate it as much as they should appreciate it. That was a really great sneaker. All right, so that's Ask Me Anything. We're gonna do that every couple of weeks. So if you guys wanna ask me, anything uh i'll put out a call on twitter or on my instagram so make sure you're following me there and then thank you guys the and then you guys can submit questions thank you appreciate it moving on to hard pass so for this week's hard pass it's where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go like the houston rockets adding a red carpet style runway for the pre-game walk not because i'm against james harden pj tucker and russell westbrook being on full swag all the time but you know Every team is gonna copy this, and I'm not sure that I'm ready for Michael Jordan to be walking down in his NBA owner dad jeans for every Hornets game. That's not the move. Anyway, so this week's hard pass goes to comedy's cancel culture problem, or more accurately, the illusion of it. We're finally here. The backlash to the backlash has its own backlash, and nobody's happy, and nobody is actually canceled. Okay, that's not entirely true. There are some very powerful people who have deservedly felt the wrath of cancellation and paid the price for it. And that's a good thing. If ever in your life you have rubbed one off in front of a colleague instead of going home, setting up your browser to private mode and locking your doors, you deserve not to have a Netflix special again. But that doesn't mean in time you can't tour or that you can't headline a club that is accepting your brand of comedy. And on that comeback trail, you get to try out new material, which often involves the words censored or triggered or sensitive and that woke culture is to blame. The irony is that these clowns actually have the safe spaces they're complaining they don't have. Don't believe me? Take the guy on SNL who got hired and fired within a few days because he broke out with a mocking fake Asian accent on a podcast. He'll never get the chance to perform a sketch at 12.50 a.m. that nobody will remember, but he will have a second life as an aggrieved comedian who can get his audience to cheer for him just by saying the magic words, political correctness. He will make more money out of this entire controversy than he ever would have being the punchline every week on Twitter when somebody asks, when did Sean Spicer leave Dancing with the Stars and join SNL. Is that, a, is that a thing? You know, whenever I hear a comedian say that their art is being ruined by cancel culture, all I hear is I'm creatively bankrupt and I'm incapable of evolving. Yes, there was a time when people laughed at stereotypes about black people, Asians, gays, and the disenfranchised. But as times have changed and those who have been marginalized for so long gain voices and even earn places at the table, so have taste in comedy. Instead of punching down to those who struggle to defend themselves, Today's comedy chooses to punch up, or in some cases, sideways. Like, when someone does something dumb in the culture, the joke shouldn't be, well, it's because they're a person of color and insert stereotype here. The observation should be, they did something dumb. That's it, that's the punchline, and not their skin color. And if you do want to cross a line or push boundaries like Larry the Cable Guy's illegitimate adopted son tried to do and instead fell back to racism, you better have something new and insightful to say. I've always been of the belief that you can make fun of just about everything in this world, but you have to earn the right. You have to build equity and trust in your audience that what you're saying isn't coming out of malice or hate, but from a real place. There's a difference between a white guy getting up on stage during open mic night and doing his best Seinfeld impersonation, what's the deal with the N-word, and Nikki Glaser poking fun at Blake Griffin's racial ambiguity during an Alec Baldwin roast. There's nuance to Blake being able to trash Caitlyn Jenner for being, well, a Jenner Kardashian. The show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, is famous for its depraved characters and perverted sense of humor, but it's still going after 14 seasons because the writers understand the audience is supposed to laugh at the gang, not agree with them. It's why there is so much conversation about Dave Chappelle's new specials. It's not because we think Dave is a trash human being who doesn't get it, it's because we know he gets it and that he's capable of more. We have proof of the peak of Dave's powers and there's two seasons of it and a bunch of lost episodes hosted by Ashy Larry and Charlie Murphy Rest in peace. Chappelle's show dragged everybody, but it was also smart and insightful by 2002 standards. But what was funny and smart and insightful in 2002 needs to evolve if it's going to work in 2019. And there's a crowd out there that believe Dave hasn't moved on, but Dave hasn't been canceled. In fact, 
He's probably gonna keep working and selling out shows until he can make up that money he left on the table when he ditched Comedy Central. Todd Phillips, director of problematic fave Joker, claims that woke culture is the reason why he had to move on from comedy, conveniently forgetting that The Hangovers 2 and 3 were dumpster fires that never should have seen the light of day. Considering how much money Joker made in its opening weekend, Todd, you should be thanking all of us for pushing you out of comedy. Even if Joker ended up being nothing more than a well-made homage to Taxi Driver and King of Comedy with a touch of Batman lore so people will actually go see it. Chris Rock and Jerry Seinfeld combined made nearly $100 million this past year just from touring and they're among the loudest whiners about cancel culture. Yeah, rough life there, guys. Joe Rogan has built an empire on being controversial for the sake of it, and now you can expect Gamergate the person to cash in on allegedly being too hot for PC culture. Meanwhile, there are comedians like Hannibal Burris, Ali Wong, and John Mulaney, and shows like Fleabag, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and The Good Place that prove it's possible to be funny in the age of wokeness. The fact that I can go on Netflix and find comedy specials that are just 90 minutes of somebody whining about political correctness means that there really is room for everybody. Because cancel culture and comedy doesn't actually mean you can never work again if you are allegedly pushing the boundaries of racism or misogyny, but really you're just recycling Eddie Murphy or Andrew Dice Clay bits in the 80s. It just means you should be accountable and understand that people who used to be the targets of these jokes, like Bowen Yang, the first Asian SNL cast member ever, has a voice now and be ready when they punch back or not and complain about it in your safe space, a podcast that's probably called No Safe Spaces. All right. That's gonna do it for the show. I can't believe we're here. We're now in season two of Hard Pass. Thank you guys so much for watching and actually missing the show. I love the tweets about uh, wanting the show to come back. We appreciate you guys. I'll see you next week for another episode. I'm Jacques Slade. This is Hard Pass. I'm not supposed to say it like that. This is Hard Pass. No, that's worth word. Hard. <clears throat> no. See, I'll see you guys next week. I don't actually go anywhere. I'd... Just keep going. Just keep going. Are we done? If I go this way, we're not done, are we? If I go this way, I'll get out. I'll be out. There you go.